to another edition of Get On Extra. We're coming off a big weekend last weekend, coming into a big weekend with the Group 1 Racing at Flemington tomorrow. And I'm joined by a great team to take you through all of our tips and hopefully plenty of winners. BZ, Matt Hill Hello, and Simon Marshall. Oh, Lizzie, I'd say, how are you after the AFL Grand Final? I'm great. I had a great time. Yeah, you're a lovely guest of Sports Bet. And yes. I partnered up with you and wanted to introduce you to part of our family and so <laughs> forth. And then unfortunately, after about six hours in the grand final on AFL day, everybody thought that we're a bit of an item. Yes. <laughs> you got hit up a little bit and then they thought that you were my manager. Yes, that's right. Are you well, okay? Uh, when Can I, we when I, set it straight yeah, here so, for everybody? So when I did protest and say I'm absolutely in no uncertain terms with this man, they then assumed that I was your manager. Yep. Which, yep. you know... I mean, that'd be a tough gig. That would be so really tough. I don't know what would be worse. After a couple of lemonades throughout the day and whatnot, what have I got coming up next week, Lizzie? <laughs> the diary. Soon, I'm trying to work out if you just come from the Bronx or Flushing Meadows. No, Where no, no. you just come from? Afghanistan, right. mate. This will get you into any fish and chip shop for free. And uh, this is uh, dressed uh, by Nazario Parisi up top, up top and a little bit of a uh, Kanye West sort of right. Usher style down here. Is we didn't get okay? the white memo, no, did we? No, I, I sort of thought we had to keep it sort of neat and casual, but um, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Shout out to Kanye and Usher, they're big fans. They're, uh, they're watching extra. the show, at least they're alive. Well, thankfully the footy's <laughs> over now, although it was great fun. It, this is full steam ahead into the racing now. Um, spring Carnival really comes alive with the Turnbull Stakes. What a card it is tomorrow, Matty. Yeah, it's terrific. It's a, it's a turning day, isn't it? Uh, we will now really find out how all of these good horses are going at uh, Flemington. And isn't it... Amazing to think we're four weeks from the great race, the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, quite unbelievable. Yeah. It is moving day at Flemington tomorrow and we have got early cash coming up to try and find our best bets from races one to three. We're going to kick things off at Flemington, Maddie, and mm. this is the day that we're going to see the first set of two-year-olds in Victoria step out, the Maribyrnong Trial. Yes, love this race, the Maribyrnong Trial. I like one uh, wolf gang. Obviously, they're all having their first start. This horse was uh, very speedy in a 650-metre trial and then went to Flemington up the straight, and I like the fact they restrained it early, didn't want to show its hand too much, but in the last 200 metres, hit the line OK. It was, uh, it was held up to the line, and I think this horse is going to explode. James McDonald's conditions. riding, and the story goes that he was watching the jump out and rang Lloyd Kennywell and said, I'm riding your horse. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, Zach Spain's been given the lemon and sass and harsh. sort of moved over. But uh, yeah. yeah, James McDonald was obviously keen to be aboard. Looks like an exciting race. My early cash comes up in race number three. I'm going with Rip Raw in the superimposed stakes. Uh, Damien Lane, Andrew Forsman, they won this race last year with Mr Maestro and I like the progression of Rip Roar. He took on the older horses and beat them at Bendigo last start. He was strong at the end of 1,500 metres and I think at around $9 he's a great each way play in that contest. Mine comes at Rose Hill Gardens. I'm race number three, horse one, Mission Phoenix. It doesn't look like a lot of speed on paper so he looks to get a lovely run up on this pace and I think he'll be able to kick away and be really hard to beat. Now I just wanted to mention your early cash. So we are races one to three but you've come up with race four. Well, <laughs> since I've extended to ten races, I've extended it out to one to <laughs> It's still early. It's still Just early. to give us a, is it the early It early needs quaddy? to win though, it's in the early It needs to win. Yeah. Okay, well let me sell this to you folks. <laughs> the Sonic Boom has been fantastic. Three runs in this time in. Uh, Oz Empress was terrific, <laughs> running on and making ground last start. Finally gets to the mile, draws a barrier. Come on, man. The Sonic Boom at $7. <laughs> nice bit of value there in race four. Okay, race four. Right, we you have to stick to the rules. I've been whacked, haven't I, by Lizzie <laughs> Early? You know what happened to the umpire the other day at the tennis with Mark Pullman's? That's, that's what happens when, oh, you, uh, yeah. when you become an umpire. Yes, well, I won't be doing that, Maddie. Let's have a look <laughs> at a preview of Flemington. Of course, it is Turnbull Stakes Day. Very much looking forward to seeing that field assembled and who is going to be on top because it is moving day. We've got a couple of bets in this race. I think we're all in agreement with this. This is horse, a first. Aren't we? Yes. I think we're all agreeing. All I don't know about that. I'm going against you guys. Well, yeah. in, race, going in, race against number, us. in race number five. Mm. Well, I wasn't including you. Okay, we're thanks. In agreement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, he was brilliant in yeah. uh, his last start performance. He looks as though the Dane Hill is going to be right up his alley. Hopefully, if he gets a good run in transit, which is probably what he didn't get last time out, he looks as though he's hard to beat. But he's the horse that I think Maddie and Esty looks the most progressive. Yeah, what she said. 
Yeah. Nothing else. Well, what, no. I, well, what I like about I'm Unstoppable is that um, he's able to get a beautiful run in transit here. And what I mean by that is there's, heap, there's heaps of speed. I'm Unstoppable can follow uh, Archo. Last time Archo Nacho flushed him out, but he can come back in behind that wall of horses that can lead him into it. So he's got options, and I think Zach Spain will attain from being defeated last week, and he'll give him the gun ride. And I think this is nearly his grand final onto the Coolmore. I think the filly can upset them here, Stred and Angel. She actually ran a quicker time in the Capped on Teebs than they did in the boys' race. I know they were two separate sort of uh, style of contest. One was a lot slower and there was a lot more pressure in the fillies, but she's pretty exciting herself. I think she gets the back of a few on the outside and uh, at the price, I'm more than happy to be on her to beat the uh, Colts and Geldings in this. You don't often see a filly run in the Daniel, but I think she'll be hard to beat. They, they rolled along a lot quicker in that race. Yep. I'm just, you know, shenanigans beat her and uh, I think she has to go up to another level against the boys. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, so it is Turnbull Stakes Day. What are our opinions? We obviously see the Hong Kong champion yes. taking his place. We've got you know some seriously good solid performers, wait for age performers who are also racing. And then we've got the likes of horses that are, are sort of ready to take their next step. We also have West Wind Blows from uh, the UK. What's the sort of general consensus at the moment? I've you can fire away. Well, maybe. I was just going to say, for the price, a horse, uh, very rarely do we see the Hong Kong champions leave their own patch. Uh, a little bit of sting out of the ground. At $2, I'd be I'd be taking on the favourite. It might come out and blow them away, but as Liz said, it's just such a good race. Aussie Penko, there's an element of timing. West Wind Blows has got pole driver form, which is mm. King George form, yep. and Solcombe's flying. I tell you what, Gold Trip ran a cracker in this race last yeah. year. So and he was amazing first up. Tremendous. So yeah. I reckon even money the favourite. Gee whiz. I think you've got to... My look is the starting point has to be Romantic Warrior. He's clearly the highest rated horse in the event, but that's to be expected that he gets to his peak. And now there's a few things in his um, form card to say he's only first up, he's travelled for the first time, he's outside of his own sort of fishbowl. Can he run to his peak under those conditions? If he does, he'll he'll win this race. But there are a few questions mm. that need to be answered. And I think he's the, the one to beat in the Cox Plate, but I'm not necessarily going to back him on the weekend. So just on that, that's not his grand final. The Cox Plate is his grand final. So whose grand final is it? And I think it's Ozapenko. I think Chris Wallace finally, um, he finally got him fit and ready to go. I love the wait for age build up that he's had. Screamed home behind Alligator Blood. And obviously his run uh, first up was very good as well in Sydney. He's a horse that his best win was over the mile and a quarter at Group 3 level. He gets to the mile and a quarter here, draws the right barrier, gets to the run of the race, and this is his Group 1 to win as a stallion, whereas West Wind Blows, I, th I got a lot of respect for his mile and a quarter mm. form in Europe, outstanding. And I think that Romantic Warrior, at the price, at even money, and his grand final being the Cox Plate, I'm going to take on Ozapenko and West Wind Blows to beat Romantic Warrior. Mm. Yeah, I think you make a few good yep. points. The other horse that I could make a strong case for at the price is Solcombe. Yep. He's yeah. been flying this campaign. A brilliant win at Caulfield. A narrow fourth, hitting the line very strongly in a race that was difficult to make up ground behind Alligator Blood. Um, you can make a case to say 2,000 metres, dropping down in the weights at set weights and penalties. He's well set. That's the go. Well. Set weights and penalties race, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Busy, you've got another selection at Flemington. You've been yes. with this horse from his first up run. Yeah, quite keen on Star Patrol. He was terrific winning the uh, Bobby Lewis first up and they went warp speed early and he was very tired late and just held on from the uh, fast finishing runners in behind him. But I think this race comes up a little weaker. I know Say Majit comes into this and she did place in a Coolmore. She's had a nice trial since her last run. But I think Ben Mellum can be a little bit more conservative than he was first up and just save a little bit more energy for the finish, and I think you'll win again. Yeah, do you think it was a peak run for him? Uh, it was a peak up? performance, yeah. In yeah. terms of the overall time that he ran, he was very, very fast. Yeah. Um, he's had three weeks between runs, so hopefully he's come through that okay. Yeah. I did bump into uh, some friends of the Clint McDonald stable on my way in here, and they seemed up and about about Star Patrol as well. Jeez, they must have been yeah. up early. Yeah. 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 Been on a tram, <laughs> like quarter past seven Cap in the morning. Guardy, yeah, I did big, see a big wow. Guardy on the way. Michael Gardner. Oh, Good very Gardy. exciting day at <laughs> Flemington tomorrow. I cannot wait to see it all unfold. But now it's time for Jelfs on the Shelf. Yes. <laughs> It's almost Christmas so as well. It is almost Christmas. We might have a, a different well. elf when it comes Christmas time. But there's been some amazing stories throughout the week. And I saw this miracle comeback. Take a look at this at this horse at Golden Gate. In the second spot, Terralura, Crystal Proof. And now, Morning Addiction. I don't know what happened there. She just stopped running. I don't know if she... Oh, 
See, there's the horse, the just back in the field. The now, what would you be thinking about here, BZ? Well, it's all over Red Rover, surely. Like, if you're on it, you're thinking, what has happened here? Leads easily, then just stops. And then you're starting to think, well, maybe I'm a hope, but surely not. Surely not. Surely not. And then comes through the line. Simon, you've ridden a lot more horses than uh, I have. What do you think would be going on there? Like, what, how does a horse do that? First thing is the steward's call you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, yes, Mr. Head Steward. Uh, no, it wasn't my fault at all. Betting sheets, all that sort of stuff all come out. And they think the jockey's pulled that up for sure. But the horse has obviously just got, put the skids on and just had a brain blank. And they can do that. They don't have power steering. They don't have disc brakes and an accelerator. If they want to stop, they'll stop on you. And you can see the jockey was like, oh, oh, what's wrong? Are you broken down or anything? Then all of a sudden, horses went past it. Notice it had the blinkers on. Mm. When the horses went past it, it went, okay, I'm back in a race again. Didn't like leading out there. That's no, the only thing that I can come up them. with. And then when it whizzed through and got going again, it was like, hello, we're going to win. And it got there. Got there. Like well, we, quite amazing. In his younger Sydney yeah. days, he was a chaser. Yes, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> Chasers nightclub. <laughs> restrained, heavily restrained. Yeah. Yeah. Retired guilty. What have you got for us, Maddie? Well, of course, we're, we're still, you know, uh, basking in uh, Collingwood's uh, victory in the grand final last week. And, of course, if you don't recognise the great man, that's Eddie Maguire there uh, <laughs> celebrating with uh, his beloved uh, magpies. But it was a little bit of a concern later in the evening. I was flicking through some form guides for interstate and this race appeared on Riser, which I was quite concerned about, the Eddie Maguire Memorial <laughs> Handicap oh, over. Uh, I thought the celebrations the might have just gone a little big. bit too far. That was but, a Geraldton uh, yesterday, so... Uh, <laughs> That's been a quick turnaround for, for, uh, no, for Ed. But no, it's uh, there is no problem. Eddie's fine. <laughs> Eddie's fine. Uh, we uh, have no issues there. And of course, I love he's the fact our that boss. We're looking at Geraldton as well. He is. Of course, we're looking at Geraldton. <laughs> looking at everywhere. Yep. Big shout out to Jam TV and all the undercover brothers and sisters who put this show on. Um, uh, Strappers and horses, the, the handlers of horses, they have, a, they have a unique bond because they wake up first time of the uh, morning and they head out to their horses and they check their feed, they check their temperature, their water, all that sort of stuff, and they build this marvel, marvellous bond. Just like this uh, carer of her horse and her horse there, look at that, getting a nice little scratch. Now, what would the horse be saying to the strapper there? I'm not sure. The handler. Can you, can you just go a little bit more <laughs> oh, oh, no. to the left and about oh, eight inches oh, no. back? So I mean, no. uh, maybe. I'm not sure, but anyway, they have a special bond and everybody loves a belly scratch, don't they? Yeah, okay, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, moving on. Moving on to Rose Hill, yeah. where we've got some terrific racing. There's a lot of great bonds in Rose Hill I know. between horse and rider. I know. Oh, my goodness me. Simon, you're up. Please just tell me, what do you like up there? Oh, Rose Hill. Now, I told you about Aussie, 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 <laughs> Moses, Moses, Moses. What did he do first up? He won. Bolt in. And he bolted in, didn't he? He did. He did. I know the second horse right. made ground on him and he won. So why would you get off a horse that's a winning machine and he's been undefeated? Stretching out in trip, second up, he's going to roll across in a small field and get on speed and at 2.45, come on, man, they're going to back Celestial Lad in that because he made Legend. ground on him. Legend, sorry. Uh, but it's Oz E. Moses. Yeah, so you're with Aussie Panko and Osmosis. It's going to be an Aussie weekend. <laughs> patriotic. Okay, I'm with NCAP, um, who looks really hard to beat race six, number one. He just has been racing so well. He actually raced brilliant in the Golden Rose last time out as well, and I'm really keen on how he should be performing. He's short, but he will be very, very hard to beat. I think he's the best bet on the card at Rose Hill. BZ, you're race nine. Yeah, I'm going with Magic Time, who's prepared in Victoria and has been up to New South Wales in the past with Graham Begg and defeated Parasol when they met last preparation. I love Loved her run first up behind Asfura. It was outstanding at Caulfield. She's been back to the jump outs. I think she's a very talented mare and she'll be awfully hard to beat it's in that race. It's a great race, that yeah. one, Switch isn't up. it? There's some really nice horses in that race. I'm also like uh, Kyobi in the last at uh, Rose Hill Gardens. I think he looks hard to beat as well. He's got the claim for Jet Stanley. He was uh, accepted for a couple of races uh, last week and the week before, but this looks as though it's a really good race for him. Um, hopefully Jet can get his another Saturday winner. Bit of a Princess Leia tip, that one, was it? Help me, obi -Wan. Kyobi. Help me out, B1 Kyobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> No, no. It must be. It was. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I'm a little it was actually Star just Wars, yeah. trying to find a winner for our viewers. Okay. 
Good tip, Lizzie. I <laughs> like it. It can win the last, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I like time, it. Time for hillbillies, Maddie. Can you bring some sort of decorum back to our yes, uh, show uh, well, today? Yes. I tell you what, we've cast our net very wide with hillbillies over the last few weeks, and we're going to go to Gunbower this wow. time. Yes. Yes. Once a year are at Gunbower. Gunbower race two, number two, Irresistible Force. Uh, if this horse uh, doesn't win at Gunbower, they might as well leave it there. Um, <laughs> oh, race Maddie. two, number two, is virtually... On over the line. That's you it does didn't look want well to placed. say the word though. It does look well no, placed. No, the M word. Yeah. yeah. It does look well placed, Maddie. Barrier inside gate should go forward. No very word. Zed, are I got you in trouble for you. I, I haven't gone through the gun bow form completely, but it is a horse that I've had something on in the past, and I think it looks well placed in that grade. Okay. Oh, well, tick of give it straight. Love it. We had to a break on get on extra. Got plenty more to come on the other side. <laughs> Because I think he'll be three deep down the side as they approach the turn and it'll bring Imperatrice in. Imperatrice has got her! And the race gone by, Imperatrice by a length. Think about it. Uh, I know he's very short, but I think he's going to win on Saturdays. Think about it! Hawaii 5 lunges! Oh, close here! I'm going to the last race at Mornington for my bet of the day, which is Extreme Step. Extreme Step is starting to power home on the outside. It's coming to the leaders one, but can it get there? They hit the line. Oh, it might have. Stand down, Sunday, race number one, Jamie Carr, Simon Wild, Wishlaw Lass, best bet of the weekend. It's Wishlaw Lass, just too good for those, and Wishlaw Lass, hands and heels, won it by over two brazen lady girls. I'm with Antino. I, I know, look, I, I know he's very short, he should have won last start, but I've been following this horse from Brisbane, and I've just got high opinion of him. Antino gets the better of here to shock, and Antino's just a bit too good, and won the Sandown Stakes by a neck. It's Arsenal to beat Bournemouth, and Newcastle to beat Burnley, so hopefully that can come off, because we've... Going with, I think the Pies will be too good at the G, they've been... The best side all year, and I think they'll uh, they'll get it done there tomorrow. But I'm going to take them into Penrith, and I think they're going to get the three peat in the NRL as well. So I'll take the double. I think Ain't No Deal Done's a really nice horse, and uh, it was a terrific win at Mooney Valley. It's at a better price, and of course beat first to Mortal Hoop. Instead of taking you on, I think we we'll do Quinella. Okay. Quinella. Forgot you and Ain't No Deal Done. There we go. Sounds good. Ain't No Deal Done is coming at them all, and has got him. Ain't No Deal Done over the top as one from well the done. Well done, yeah. everyone. Well Great done, job. Everyone. Teamwork there, man. Yeah. Yeah, we're Quinella. even tipping Quinellas now. <laughs> hey, Buck Quinella was fantastic. <laughs> Ding dong battle. That was great. And what about you? And just the Lizzie. queen of the sports bet. Yes, right? I know. I noticed my um, Epsom tip didn't get in there either. Oh, what happened? Adina, guys. Oh, oh yeah. that's a little okay. oversight, isn't it? Anyway, you, you, you just want to try only, and keep your level only, here. Okay, only then? $14, but that's okay. Oh, oh, okay, oh, let's oh, move oh, on oh, to oh. drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie's, SD. Lizzie's whacking stick continues yeah. to perform well on the show. That's good, but we no, know that's fair enough too. This show, hey? <laughs> it was fantastic. I'm going to have a little tip here. I'm going race four, number 12 here at Rose Hills. On Saturday, this horse was uh, terrific last start. Stannis Laus. Uh, so for what it's worth, I'm with the uh, protagonist in the Hill Stakes, in the Bat Hill Stakes. In the, indeed. Um, we're going to go and try and blow it out of the water here. There's a 100 to 1 shot that can run a place in the superimposed. Double glazed was very, very oh, unlucky my. in the Exford. You... And a place bet, I think you're going to get about 20 to 1. My goodness, you've gone from one extreme to another. With your place, it, yeah. It's your the grey horse for Julius Sanders yeah. been trialling okay, mm. and if he brings it to race, I'm going to go with Solcom as my best place bet of the weekend. Uh, I think he can run a big race in the Turnbull. Let's have a look at uh, what big all multi. of our selections are for drum kit. We have a very, very big multi here. Oh, oh. my goodness me. Stanislaus for Rose Hill, protagonist uh, for myself. There'll be a bronze statue of you at the front. Double of Blaze and, and Solcom. Well, when he, he doesn't miss when he tips a one well, at double figure odds. We'll see what happens. Come on. Good Gotta luck. get a run first. Come on. <laughs> Gotta get a run first, number 20. But uh, yeah, don't ignore it for your exotics if you're, if you're playing early at Flemington. I love it. Let's have a look at our best bets elsewhere. There's plenty of racing now. We've got it all across the country, especially we've got meetings on Saturday afternoon, as usual, and on Sunday. I've gone to Kembla Grange, race four, number five, Midnight Opal. Did a brilliant job on debut at Sky, and he looks a really progressive horse for the Nathan Doyle stable. I think you'll be looking at him later on. He'll win on Saturday, and he will be very hard to beat in anything he races in after that. Race five, number nine at Eagle Farm, and Nasi. Robbie Dolan's going to jump back on this horse was very good this track and trip last start. It'll jump on speed and control the race, Manasi. 
We're going to Mertoa for Cup Day on Saturday, which will be the second Victorian meeting for the afternoon. You'll see all the coverage on racing.com. And while the Cup is one of the features, there's also a really good race, which is a heat of the uh, Melbourne Cup Country Series final. And uh, there's a, a heat there at Mertoa. There'll be heats all around the country. Poison Chalice, he was defeated at short odds at Sandown last time. Uh, but his run was still very good. There's a bit more speed in this. He should sit back and he'll be one of the leading contenders for the uh, final if he can happen to get through this. And I think he'll be winning on Saturday. That was clearly your best delivery. That was a tricky start to that uh, oh. conversation. <laughs> it was a few C's in well, there. Yes. Exactly what I mean. Okay. You've got another one? Yes, I do. Going to Kalgoorlie. Oh! Yeah, it's a two day carnival up there at Kalgoorlie. We've got to get up there. Mm. The old get on extra team. How would we go up there in the minefields, Matty? Uh, I wouldn't be wearing be... that jumper up there. Why not? I'd just well, get the old after being out there and just say, let's go and find some gold. After um, we've been to Darwin. Red Cadillac. And... Red Cadillac race five, number 10, bolted in this track and trip last start. It can do the same. It was eased down by three lengths. And what price are we getting again there, 245. folks? 245. 245. It's a lock in, Kalgoorlie. Right, it's time for From the Hilltops, Maddie. We found you a, a good one to call uh, this week. Well, we I have didn't done find everything. it, Simon found it. Well, we have done everything from Japanese game shows uh, to mascot races <laughs> to uh, AFL games. But we've now gone through to the world of wife carrying. The 2023 oh, wow. wife carrying World Championships <laughs> yeah. and they're away at number yeah. 16 on the inside got off to a very good start. This is the closest these two have got together for some time because they are married. Oh. Into the water, water jump they go and it's 16 in front. <laughs> five out three, five metres to number 13 as they clear the water Jeez. jump with a few steeplechase fences to come here in the 2023 snorkel, World <laughs> Wife Carrying Championships. It looks like an uncomfortable sit doesn't it uh, Simon Marshall? As they come, watch the plums here. Oh. As number 16 16 over has raced away about 20 metres in front of <laughs> number 13 who is struggling He's with that the... impost of about 75 kilos over the second Come last. On, the line in oh, second. Oh, 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 ankle oh, snap. Me. Oh, no. only two metres to go. Tough. Number 16 oh, oh. Get there? has to carry the weight over the line. Get those oh, ankles I think up. The You've got to carry the weight. He has to get no, up he's again. Gone. He's and the they've <laughs> just got there oh. in a time of 115.93 World Championship wife carrying what could possibly oh, the go ankles? wrong. Oh. And he will be in a bit of pain, old mate. <laughs> heading down there, but there's songs. a few things there. I mean, geez, the training for this would be interesting. <laughs> and what would you eat the night before would be another thing, <laughs> oh, <laughs> particularly the rider. Good Lord. Um, now, I have Does to he... say, I will say this on air to put pressure on our How producer. How would you go? But <laughs> with your husband. Next you and Ryan would do a great job. <laughs> next week we're doing the cockroach eating from Japan. Oh, oh, yes. You've got to do it. I've seen a bit of We've footage of this, to Matthew. I don't you got know to... what you have been watching this week. You've got to train up for this. But that's the uh, nearly snapped the ankles, jumping in the pool. Poor girl couldn't <laughs> couldn't breathe. She needed a snorkel oh, there to get out of the other end. And it's... then at the end she would have been saying, get up, we're, just, we're nearly done, it's nearly over. There's wow. a bit going on there, so I hope everybody's okay. <laughs> After that, oh, here's one that took my uh, attention. <laughs> we love our overseas racing and we love some namings of horses. Now, I want you to focus in on the first horse here, the third horse, and then I'm going to ask you a question about the second horse. <laughs> Away with the replay. Leaving Wordsworth clear. Black Ock is about to take second <laughs> from <laughs> Wise Guys. They run down to the final flight. Wordsworth with the race in command. Wordsworth, goes across the last ten lengths clear from Black Ock. And <laughs> Wise sure. Guy having a good battle for second, <laughs> but left clear two out Wordsworth has gone on to score very Wordsworth. easily Black Hawk got the better of Wise and Guy then in the closing Wise stages guy. to fill second place can you tell can you please explain the name of the second horse <laughs> Black Ock what OCC I wish the race caller had slowed down when he was calling that name there said I'll tell you Wordsworth Wise Guy was third and Black Ock was second that's a tricky one for a uh, Matty you're a race caller <laughs> How would you pronounce Moving that? On. Can you call that last race for us? <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Moving on. No, I, I think we have to push on, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> Time for Should have run that one we through HR show as well. <laughs> <laughs> Time for back sucking crap. This might be my last show. <laughs> very well. Oh, tested oh, the very oh. well could be your last show, so let's go out with a bang. Yes. Who have we ended up with at Fleming? It's a tricky little race, this race four, and as you know, I think... Um, <laughs> The Sonic Boom can win it, but I think Dolphin Skin's great value to run the place at $26 back what, at Flemington. What noise does a dolphin make? Over, I'm not going to fall into it, Nick Ashman. <laughs> Flipper, hello to Flipper if you're watching. Uh, I'm with Argentia. I think she can run uh, top three on Saturday. Uh, 
Sepius does look hard to beat in the race, but Argentia is a great each way play. And in each way, whilst you're backing Star Patrol, BZ's mm. uh, good bet in the uh, Gill Guy. I think Ashford Street's flying at an each way price. I'm going with Shiraz for Chris Waller and the Bark Cummings. Looks like it's ready to peak now. Third up. It was a good run at uh, Caulfield last time out. What are we going to find something to get beaten at the weekend Ooh, that's a favourite? Oh, Simon. I know he's Hong Kong's best. Don't shoot me. It's his first trip away. I don't think this is his grand final. I want to watch him in a cox plate or back him in a cox plate. And the even money is too short. I think Ozapenko and West Wind blows in that. Be fair to say, if he was $3.50, you'd back him, but $2 too short. Yeah, atmospheric rock for me in the Happy to take on Riff Rocket. And Legacies just has to work too hard again for mine. What's the best bet of the weekend, team? I'm oh. going with Star Patrol for uh, Clint McDonald and uh, Benny Mellon. And just like Simo's performance today, he is unstoppable. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm with NCAP. I think he will be very hard to beat. Absolutely. Now, we're betting with mates this spring carnival. It's huge. Oh, On the Sports mates. Bet app, we've pumped that up in certain ways. We've brought the emojis in. We've, of course, now you can go and text one another and say, Lizzie, that's a great tip. I like it. I think we should double down on our bet with mates and have a little bit of fun or just ease up on something that we, if the track's not playing quite right, you can also text her and say, no, 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 less and less Andy Dufresne from this bet and we'll <laughs> save our money. And... You can also have a little bit of weird and wonderful ways of getting a quaddy, just like this bloke here, who sent it in, he got this quaddy, and one of my mates put a quaddy on using all mates shoe sizes in all four legs, and we got the quaddy that weekend. That's one way to pick your there you go. Yeah. lol. Bringing some uh, shoe sizes, what's your shoe analysis? size? Uh, five and a half. Five and a half, five? Um, what do they say about you? Uh, 12 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a get on extra bet with mates. Okay, with a shoe size. Yeah. Shoe sizes. 11. Where at? I'm about a nine. 11, nine, five. five. I'm an eight. So they'll all go in our quaddy with our betting <laughs> yeah. with mates, but we're going to have a little bit of fun and have what a multi here mate? too. Betting with weight, mates multi. We'll start a group and we'll share the moment, of course. But this is our multi. They will have a little three-legger. Yes. Yeah, this with is Miss Bet with mates. So we have not been consulted here, have we? Yes. Oh, that was your best. That was oh, your okay. best. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. Cap and mice. Yeah, yeah, there's a protest there. I'm pretty happy with okay. I am unstoppable into end cap Rose Hill. Start and then we're going to start patrol at $14.25. A little no multi betting with mates. Hopefully no one lets the team down. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> we're Time celebrating. For a break now on Get On Extra. Betting with mates on we'll Turbo Space. After Day. dark and Sunday session. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for Sunday session. We're looking to find a bet on Sunday and Simon is kicking things off. Where are you going, Simon? We've had a bit of rain mm. uh, here in Victoria on Sundays. Uh, Bendigo's come up a heavy eight. Don't think it'll dry out too much. Might get to a soft seven. And there's a horse race seven and number 12, uh, Matitsi here. This horse is back to Bendigo. Three starts back, one over a thousand metres and was very good. Now, 1,100 metres, the key here is out of that chute on a, on a, on a soft track at Bendigo. Very good price too, each way all day at the 23 bucks. Yeah, great Sunday. Price. I'm going to Hawkesbury on Sunday, a horse called Mr Buster, who ran the fastest sectionals at a midweek meeting at Warwick Farm a couple of weeks ago. He looks really well placed. He's my on top selection race three, oh, sorry, race five, number two, Mr Buster. And I'm Bendigo, uh, race number three. They call it the Nursery of Champions. In fairness, I don't think there's any champions in this race, but Iron Bar's first ever run was on a soft track and ran well. It's knocking at the door for Kieran Maher and David Eustace, so race three, number four. And you're heading Bendigo as well? Yes, I'm going it? to Bendigo with one of the locally prepared gallopers, trained by Brendan Herps, has trialled very well. Um, enough on. It's had two runs in maiden grade over 1,000 metres, bumped into Wee Nessie, on one occasion, and she's pretty rich on the other. Trialled up very nicely this time in, doesn't mind the sting out of the track. Should be winning, race five, number three, enough on, and comes out of a mare called Um Get On. Ah, there you go, there you go. a bit of an omen tip. Well, it's time for Extra Extra, read all about it. We're gonna be reading these Sunday headlines. Simo, you are kicking things off. Yes, I know, and, I, uh, and I'm leaning towards the Turnbull, the Group 1 race. So Ooh. here's my headline here, and I think it starts with a little bit of no romance at Flemington as Aussie flies the flag. Ah, oh, very nice. Uh, and so maybe yes, you're next. I'm at Flemington as well, a little bit of a theme today. I am unstoppable. Storms to cool more favouritism. Ooh, Ooh love Well, um... Oh, I've gone Warrior has Cox Plate at his mercy. Oh, so yeah. that doesn't mean he necessarily needs to win, but he I think he's going to run a big race and then oh. everyone's just going to be saying, well, how do they beat this horse in a cox plate? 
And mine is uh, Maddie Hill steals my headline. Oh, that's not fair. Oh, for <laughs> oh, is, that, is that right? <laughs> were, you, were you agreeing? Yes, yeah, yeah, I was. I actually, you just beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beautiful. Is that my joke time? Yes, oh. you can throw oh, it. Oh, no, we've yeah. got... Oh, no. <laughs> We've got some breaking news. Not enough O's in smooth here. Breaking news and we don't have... We'll go with the breaking news and not the joke today. OK, and the breaking news is police have confirmed that the man who fell from the roof of a nightclub was not a bouncer. <laughs> How about that for breaking news? It's a good joke. It wasn't a bouncer. That was not breaking bad. news. Bouncer. Yeah, at least we got news. it. That's the main thing. OK. The, the whole point is that we get the punchline. Thank you. I thought it was pretty good. You've played a blinder today. Absolutely. Something about this cap and the white number, yeah. you've just yeah. been absolutely on fire. All to the peeps. 38 touches of yes. yeah. yeah, well, he's yeah. got to get on now tomorrow morning at 10.30. Uh, very much looking forward to you finding plenty of winners and lots of jokes, I assume. What was your favourite nightclub when you were growing up? Is he... I can't remember. I'm too old. Right. You stayed yeah. out of HR this week, mate. All right. like, just... Dead oh, nightclubs? You used to get to Ivy a bit. OK, the I, Ivy. Oh, of course well, you did. So didn't Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Sydney. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Thank Chris you so Dali. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>